Hi, my name is Nick Braun. On this episode of Nick Knows, we're going to talk about measurement error mitigation. Measurement error mitigation. So at the end of operating on our quantum circuit, we're going to want to measure the results. And in that way, we collapse the quantum information to classical information. So sometimes this results in an error, pro an error process, and we can figure out and calibrate it out of our systems. So say, for example, I want to measure the states 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, all the numbers on 3 qubits up to 8, which is 1, 1, 1. And I'm going to obtain the results that I get from the measurement, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, all the way up to 1, 1, 1. So if our measurement was perfect and we prepared these qubits in these classical states, then we would expect to measure exactly what we prepared. And so we get basically a line here. However, in general, there's going to be some noise that enters the system, and we might get some probabilities of measuring results that we did not prepare. This is a process that is classical and can be understood via a simple equation. Our probabilities of the noisy system is equal to a matrix A times the probability of our ideal system. Our ideal system being the classical system that we prepared that has nothing to do with quantum control errors or any other uncertainties. So we can calculate this A matrix which is the classical process through which our noise enters the system. And we can imagine we could just invert it and get the ideal outcome that we wanted. This is true in general, but in particular, when these quantum systems get larger and larger, this becomes harder and harder to calculate, which is why we start using a matrix-free version of this. We call it M3 for matrix-free measurement mitigation. So. The package that we're going to use is, is M3. It's a Qiskit extension, and we can pip install it and import uh, what we need from it. In particular, from M3, import capital M number 3 mitigation. We'll provide details in the, uh, in the description below. So the first thing we need to do is instantiate our mitigation routine by building a class mitigation. And this will take our back end as an input. Then we want to find the qubits that we're actually doing the uh, algorithm on and just deal with those and not have to deal with the, the other ones. So we can say that MIT dot, whoops. Cal's from system. The backend information is already there, but we need to tell them which qubits. So this will be my layout. These qubits could have been determined from perhaps our uh, layout routine from, say, Mapomatic. Now we have our mitigation. Uh, this runs an experiment on the quantum computer, which essentially replicates this. And then we uh, want to apply it to a job that we've already run. So we already have, say, the counts we've gotten from another job. Counts equals job dot result dot get counts. And then we just need to put those uh, mitigation routine with the counts. So we can get our mitigated quasi-probabilities now. equal to MIT dot apply correction. And that's going to take the counts from our experiment and the layout of our qubits. And it contains the error correction already. So this will return the mitigated results for you. And now they're quasi-probabilities um, instead of probabilities. Um, there's another way that you can interact with measurement error mitigation too, and that's via Qiskit runtime. C 
So even easier is when you're constructing the sampler, you're going to put your quantum circuits in there, you're going to put your service. But we have another setting called resilience. Resilience settings. And inside there, we can set that to a dictionary with the value one, which will enable this kind of process on the back end without you having to think about it and go through the process. Measurement error mitigation is a classical routine that is usually always a good idea to get better quasi-probabilities from noisy measurement outcomes. I've been your host, Nick Braun. Thanks for watching.